the scripture passage says to the church, this is how much I care. My sheep are scattered all over the hillside. And in many cases, it's justified because they've had experiences relationally that have left them alienated, wounded, disenfranchised, and disillusioned with church. And what we have to do now, it's wonderful you're visiting this morning and you come here. What we as a church have to do, the calling of the church today is not to invite people to come to church, but rather to invite the church to get out there and be missionaries and ambassadors for Jesus Christ to the people in the world. That's where the gold is. That's where the gold is. I want to share, I, know, I don't have this time to share all the stories, but this is what in our ministry we've done is we've developed a program called PALS, and it's actually the pastors that we train are not paid pastors, it's every one of you. We train children, middle school, high school, and on up through adults. We train them to be pastors at large, what we call PALS, pastors at large. And that's one of the things that we need to do as a church is to reshape our paradigm to instead of being a consumer at church and where I come to church and I receive God's blessing and I experience a wonderful thing, I learn the Bible, we need to supplement our education, our understanding, our theological understanding with practical theology. We need to become missionaries to our culture and you can do it in the grocery store, you can do it at school. And what your gift is, is not preaching. You need to preach the message without using words. They need to experience the love of Jesus Christ. They need to know what grace feels like because they don't get it anywhere else. You are ambassadors of grace. Do you understand grace? Uh, every, I, I, I bring that up only because Every church I've been at <clears throat> where I preached or where, where I've, I've lead, led those churches, when I arrived there, after about a month or two, he said, you know, we never understood grace. And I, I, I'm not quite sure how that can be, but I do know this. Grace is what separates Christianity from every other philosophy or religion. It's what makes Christianity unique because only in grace is our value fixed, not on our own performance, but on someone else's. Jesus has paid the price for your self-esteem. You can feel good about yourself and still be a screw-up. That's not, that's, that's big. We don't, and why that's big is because we don't have to lie. We don't have to pretend. We don't have to pretend we're better than somebody else. And we don't, we get the freedom. We have the freedom to say, I want to be better, but God loves me the way I am. I can live with that. That's good news. That's exciting news. If we can be that kind of salt and penetrate our culture with the smile, you're communicating something because they've heard our preaching. They've been in the churches and they've left. They said, I've seen it. I've experienced it. Wasn't my, didn't, didn't, didn't sink in, didn't cut it. But they, will, but they will buy into the touch of your grace and love and acceptance. And you do it so much that's non-verbally and just being there. Training the pals. Tell you one story, and this is the only one I've got time for. I've got more, but I don't have time for the one. We've done this with uh, kids through adults. We had these kids, they started age 10. And when my daughter, uh, both my daughters, Lori and Christy, have been through the PAL training program, they're both good pals. And they're pals to fellow students. They have that their ministry. Uh, Christy, when she was 12, there was a neighbor girl, a neighborhood girl by the name of Hannah. Hannah was 10. Hannah lived over in the trailer court, away from us. She came from a very... A dysfunctional family. Her mother and father hated each other. They ended up getting a divorce. They didn't like her. She was unaccepted. And she would come over, and Christy found her over at the park playing one day. And Christy had bought into the identity that I have a responsibility to be a pal, a pastor at large. She's part of my congregation that God has given me. And this little girl, Hannah, befriended Christy. And Christy was probably her only friend. And she would come over literally on a daily basis and simply 
Christy would simply hold her and let her cry. That's what she needed. She would cry and cry. And this 12-year-old pastor would be holding this 10-year-old girl who'd come from a broken home and didn't know what love and unconditional acceptance, apart from performance, felt like before. So Christy earned credibility. In time, Hannah had to move because her parents split up. Her mom didn't want her. Her dad didn't really want her either, but somebody had to take her, so dad took her. They ended up moving to, I think it was New Jersey. They moved to New Jersey. And after they got there in New Jersey, the dad got a new girlfriend. <clears throat> the girlfriend hated poor Hannah and made life miserable for Hannah every time she came home, every day she came home from school. So Hannah stayed in touch with her pastor by not email, what's the instant messaging? I'm dating myself. I already have to work on that. She stayed in touch with Christy. And so by the, this is now a two-year relationship they've had. Christy's probably about 12, 13, 14 now. Hannah maybe 12. And Christy talks, told her about try the library. After you come, instead of coming home straight to school, there's a great library programs. Christy introduced her. She had never been to a library before. One day, Jeanette and I noticed that Christy was having a hard time one evening. And Jeanette spent some time with Christy only to find out that she'd received an email or an instant message from Hannah. Hannah had come home from school that day and walked into the kitchen and found her father had committed suicide. And she was the one that found him. Two weeks later, Hannah walks into the house and she finds her brother committed suicide and was laying on the kitchen floor. Who did Hannah turn to? She turned to her pastor. Her 14-year-old friend, Pastor Christy, who had just gone through the PAL training program and had simply learned how to be a pastor at large. And Christy learned how hard it is to be a Christian, how Christianity is not always just youth group and fun and games and having a great time and singing praises Christianity in today's world hurts. There is a cross. Whoever would follow me, deny himself, pick up his cross and follow me. For whoever would seek to save their life must lose it for me, for my sake and the sake of the gospel, and they will find it. And that is where the gold is. Do we want them? They're outside the church. They're right in our neighborhoods. They're next door. They're at the store. They're all God's priceless diamonds. Do we want them? Are you ready to reach them? I actually know the answer to this question because I got a pretty good feel of this church. Make way for reaching your world, your community, with the love of Jesus Christ through grace, through your eyes, through your presence. Because all they want is simply to be wanted as they are. <laughs>